We do so knowing that we are privileged to serve the citizens of this community and we shall endeavor to conduct our business in their best interest. Thank you. Thank you. Prior to adoption of the agenda, is there any new business from council? Staff, we're good? Okay. Adoption of the agenda? So moved. Okay. All those in favor? Carried? So much easier to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Minutes of the meeting, of the regular meeting held on July 2nd. 2024. Motion to receive. Second. Any omissions, errors? All those in favor? Carried. No delegations, the bylaws, committee reports. Any reports? Staff report? Okay. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I've got a of a brief administrator's report today. I'm pleased to tell you that uh, we are finally have all of our permits in place so that we can begin some beaver remediation and mitigation down in the valley. Uh, it was a three and a half year process to get our federal and provincial permitting in order. Very complicated, very delicate. There's, um, it, there's a, it's a fish bearing stream, Centurion Creek. There's all kinds of waterfall nesting and, and all kinds of different habitats. And it's a key part of our ecosystem. So the everybody from the federal Department of Fisheries down to provincial administrative environment gets involved in these things. Uh, some high points are that uh, we're legally res restricted to a specific time of the summer where we can do a stream disturbance because we have to make sure we, we miss the uh, fish spawning season, the bird nesting season. All these, all these things. Um, we've also partner, partnered with CN Rail, and we're utilizing their their expert as well uh, because some of the the damming is starting to impact uh, their infrastructure as well. Um, so what we'll do is we'll begin lowering water as early as this week potentially in, in the dams. As you can imagine, this is you know there's there's been some social media comments about using dynamite, but that would result in a kind of a flood. So it's going to be starting at the footbridge at the Legion and working our way up slowly and, and a careful release of water so that we don't do any damage downstream. Um, once the water levels are down, the expert will come in and we'll do a live trap and relocation. Um, moving forward, these permits are good for six years. So we have a, a six year plan where we can monitor and control and, and make sure as they put it in the report that we, we kind of continue to peacefully coexist uh, we anticipate that we'll be working on that stream into well into August for this year. And, and we're encouraging residents to just be aware that uh, uh, there'll be people working, equipment working. We'll have live people monitoring at key points when we're releasing water. And we'll, we'll make sure we keep a very careful eye on thing, things and we'll have signage as well in place. Um, moving over to the Clinsey's uh, Park, expansion. One of the things that I was concerned about last week was that BC Wildfire has a different firefighting suppression strategy for provincial parks than for non-provincial parks. Um, we might remember the Gwillem Lake fire that we had just two years ago. They actually didn't do any suppression efforts on it. And, and that was a concern for me because, of course, this park is directly north of us and adjacent to our community. So I contact the BC Wildfire, see if there's any changes. The local information officer responded that, and I quote, at the present time, there are no changes to BC Wildfire's response strategy. We will continue to respond as per the current fire management plan for the area. In future, BC Parks will develop a fire management plan specific to the park and its expansion. This will include First Nations consultation and stakeholder engagement. So we'll continue to monitor this very closely and make sure that, that our voice is heard and our concerns are heard. Um, Northern Health, as we know, uh, Northern Health hospital divisions continue to impact our entire region and Canada in general. Um, I forwarded a, a lovely article from the Councilor Hun sent to me earlier today that, that's you know, kind of terrifying. We have a need for 
43,000 doctors in Canada, and we're we're sending 167 to school every year, and and the numbers don't quite align. So this is this is a concern. Um, it's important also to notice that sometimes diversions are not due to staffing, like our, our diversions this week are due to a, a RN and bed capacity with critical patients waiting for transfer. Sometimes the beds are full, sometimes the hospital is full. Our hospital is relatively small and it doesn't take very much to fill it. Um, locally, Fort St. John and Dawson Creek are also experiencing regular ER room diversions and there's a lot of of con you know, conversation and, and strategizing to see if there's if there's any way we can help alleviate it as an area. As I mentioned in my email to Council last week or the week before, we pay $380,000 into a regional hospital association fund and, and realistically the budget for the, the hospital here would be comfortably into the millions of dollars. So we're, we're in a sense getting our money's worth, even though our community isn't getting the service that it deserves. We still pay less than the surrounding communities do. Um, in the affordable housing front, staff has reached out to Northern Lights College as directed by you good folks. And, uh, and I've spoken with the Dean of Continuing Education and, and we're going to see if we can uh, formulate a, a working partnership with the trades classes. And, and we'll we'll talk about you know lots and and building and that kind of thing, but but we are we are working on it, and that would be my report, and my recommendation would be the council receives my report for information. Just a question, uh, Councilor Dash. Um, were they receptive at Northern Lights? Oh, they were. I would say enthusiastic. Yes, very very receptive. We're dealing with Shante Patterson Eldon, who's got local ties here. Uh, wants to retire here, and so she she really wants to help our community succeed. It's a strong partnership. I'm very pleased with it. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Oh no. Yeah. yeah, I just got a question on. Uh, you said Gwilym Park. You said North. No, I said Gwilym Park. The fire last year or two years ago, they didn't do any suppression activities, yep. and that concerns me because Plains Zaza is directly yeah. north of us. And so if, if they decided to maybe reduce suppression efforts yep. because it's in a park area mm -hmm. and, and the wind's coming out of the north, then, then the fire gets bigger, our community is more directly impacted. That's why I contacted yep. them, is to make sure that they understood the inherent risk there from our perspective, and they seem to. Okay. So with the new park, the, that probably will be the same for them, right? For whoever's in that area? With the new park that they've uh, established, yes, we're we're yeah. we're monitoring it. So far, no change, but we'll 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 be on it if there is. Okay. Any more questions? <coughs> Motion to accept the report. Motion received. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Carry. For correspondence, information, reports to action. Uh, reports for information, June account payable checklist. Make the recommendation that the check register for the month of June 2024 totaling $692,653.41 be received. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Carried. No new business. Any public questions at this time? Good. Okay, German. I'm also adjourned. Second. We're adjourned.